Hi guys. Oh, I am a little bit too tall for this. <laughs> um, welcome back. Today we're gonna have a video with a product review. I just finished repairing these uh, Fisher, D Fisher, the original Fisher Company speakers uh, from the 60s, 66, 67, something around there. So this is before they went crappy. And uh, I just, like I said, finished repairing them, and what a freaking nightmare that was. Uh, I have not done anything to the finish of the cabinets. I have repaired them inside. The problem was when I got them was the speaker connectors on the back is the type that you put through the wood on the back or the, the speaker connector plate with, that has the crossover in it. And you stick it through and there's a bolt or a nut on the inside that you tighten it with well they had come off and the speaker connector had fallen off so um and trust me all sides are glued the back side is glued there's no way to get in except for the front and these speakers has a cloth grill on the inside and it has like a plastic mesh almost like you see in the ceiling sometimes that is uh, covering up the fluorescent lights so this plastic grill right here is not easy to get off without breaking it um, I know someone has tried in the past because there's a little chip here on the bottom someone that tried because they don't know how it is put in it's put in in a very special way and you have to be really, really careful on how you remove this thing or else it will break on you. So I spent quite a bit of time to get the grills off. Um, I re put the, uh, because I had the original connectors, I put the connectors back in and I tightened it from the inside. What I also did at the same time, because they back in the day, they had used some kind of a cloth and on the to separate the drivers in the front and they had a cloth back there and on the back of the cloth they had used some type of a wool glass wool something like that it itches like hell um i took all of that out and i replaced it with the proper proper stuff um the drivers were, were good nothing, nothing problem problematic with the drivers the um, crossovers, the, the soldering points on the crossovers with, with age had become brittle and in a few places it had got loose. So I did some soldering work on the crossovers. So now they work. So when I was done, I had to have a half an hour break. <laughs> it was just exhausting. Um, I had, still have to kind of like put this logo, the D Fisher logo. Uh, it's it's stuck on there like it was it's it's put on there in a very weird way um, so I just have to kind of like make it a little bit flusher um, okay so I was done and I, I was thinking to myself you know what take half an hour break um, and then I'm gonna test them um, I did not have any big um, because I've heard them before, not 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 this pair, but I've heard um, a similar pair um, because I had one pair like oh geez six seven years ago, and I couldn't remember how they sounded, and, you know, because I only had them for a brief period of time, and, and back then I I had a Fisher amplifier that the from the original Fisher company, so. I didn't use a lot of power on them. Uh, today I um, used a Carver uh, amplifier and um, Radio Shack amplifier. I used two different amplifiers. The Carver is uh, the PXM250. Um, so I was running about 80 watts from that one. And then I was running the uh, Radio Shack, the MPA250A. Uh, which is supposed to be 125 watts per channel, but 
the carver uh, kind of feel a little bit feels a little bit more powerful um, and I got the best result sound wise with the carver uh, PXM 250 so how is the sound my I mean like I said I own them before um, and so I should know how they are and uh, trust me I wouldn't have gotten this if they were crap uh, anything from the Fisher company not the Fisher that was owned in the 80s by Sanyo or anything like that, but the original D Fisher, like we have here, um, is rather good. Um, and I wouldn't have gotten them if I, if, if, I, if I didn't think so. Now, the difference between this pair and the other pair that I had was, the other pair that I had was almost, I mean almost in mint condition. Um, these are not. Uh, the veneer is chipping, there's a lot of scratches. So these, to become really nice again, would have to be re-veneered. Uh, but for most people, that's not a big, big deal. Uh, so put some new veneer on them and they should be good to go. Um, sound. I, like I said, I had forgotten what the sound was like in these speakers. So I, uh, when I plugged it up today I was like it was like doing a new review and a new test and all that stuff so I played a couple of CDs uh, I started out with this one which is N Vogue Funky Divas um, kind of like a R&B soul hip-hop kind of thing not hip-hop but R&B and soul and I started off with that and moved on from there did some um, Steely Dan and did some uh, Elton John, uh, Dire Straits, Phil Collins, uh, moved on to Pagan's Mind, John Lander, uh, Metallica, Iron Maiden. So I played a wide range of music and genres just to, to see the, the, the differences. And what kind of hit me right off from the start was it has a very warm sound these speakers are very warm sounding regardless of music type maybe a little bit less warm when you play really energetic heavy metal but still has that warm warm feeling um, but they come across a little bit a little bit cooler or a little bit more sharp with with hard rock and metal but for the most part, I, I, I got a feeling, I was sitting there going like, hmm, this sounds really, really warm, has a very warm tone, the mid-range is very, very warm and very clear. Uh, the tweeters are suiting and fits my, my taste really good. It's not an overbearing high uh, tweeter sound, although you have an adjustment on the back, right now it's in the what I call middle or 12 o'clock position, not on the minimum, not on the maximum, but right there in the middle. So when I had it there, the tweeters were really, really nice. They were distinct. They, you could hear the tweeters like you should. They were not overbearing. You didn't feel like you're lacking anything. Um, but maybe the thing that, that surprised me the most was the low end and the bass response. Um, yes. Um, there, there's a big woofer in here, 10 inch or something like that, 10 or 12 inch, I'm not sure. Um, but I think it's a 10 inch, maybe maybe, maybe a 12. Um, I have to look it up. I haven't really put too much attention into it because I just got them like a few months ago and I was supposed to redo them and my plan was to get a, back to the Fisher amp um, and, and have a Fisher set up. Um, and that, that's probably how they're gonna end up becoming. But, um, so I was sitting there and I was playing, especially when I played the and Vogue, um, the bottom end and the bass response was really, really nice. Uh, it was, it was full. It was not, I didn't feel like I was lacking any bass. Um, I maybe had more bass. And this is funny that I say that. I maybe had a little bit more bass and warmer and rounder bass when I used the Radio Shack amplifier when I used the Carver it was 
still warm and but more punch um so th but that's 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 the amplifier you know how the amplifier acts when you hook them up so it sounded maybe a little bit more um if you're out like riding a boat and there's waves and you know you, you ride the waves and you just like this this motion up and down and wiggling back and forth and while with a car it's more like a when you do hydroplaning and, and you know the boat is like jumping the, the waves instead of rolling with the waves so with the uh, radio shack i want to say that the the bass was a little bit gent a little bit more gentle and a little bit more round maybe not as distinct or in your face but it was there with the carver the sound become more tight still with low bass but it was more like it, it was almost like it was shooting out of the speaker instead of rolling out of the speaker and so I like the, the sound from these with the carver best but yeah the the bass response on these D Fisher XP1 um, surprised me uh, surprised me a lot I, I liked it I can't remember how the bass was on the other ones I had because it's so long ago and since then I've been listening to hundreds of speakers hundreds several hundreds of speakers so you know when you listen to something many many years in the past you kind of you forget how the experience was but I want to say that the high point of these speakers is the total sound that they produce they are not your SPL or I'm gonna rock out 125 or 130 DB type of speakers they can probably play loud but i didn't test that today like I, well they, they played loud because of course i went up to 11 12 o'clock on the amplifier um but um so so there was <laughs> i was way over 100 db i probably 110 115 db but it's no certain way i got at 100 or dx9 level but it, it plays loud but even when I when I went up to twelve o'clock position on on the amplifier, um, it's played with. It played with. It was like almost like a conductor. It was like it stood up and projected the sound really really nice, correctly. Um, it had very nice tweeter and not, like I said not overbearing. Didn't feel like I lacked any tweeter. Uh, or high frequency um, the mid was really really good I I like it when a mid comes out as very open and direct and it's almost like you could hear when the because on this CD when I played this CD the end wall song number one is like an intro I think and they're talking a lot there is some background piano or something some instrument but there's mostly female and male talking and you could hear all the nuances and all the little subtle things that is going on and you could hear the things in the background and uh, like there was some background noises maybe a door that was slamming I don't remember but I, I was like holy crap this is a very detailed mid-range and it's it's very direct it's not like you're sitting there trying to drag the mid-range response out of the speaker and you don't need to EQ these a lot if you have I mean I don't think you have to EQ them at all just put them in a nice room with some nice room acoustic and these will play really good on EQ uh, and it like in in here where I tested it now with a lot of stuff and there's a lot of reflections and there's a lot of hard surfaces even though I, I did it in here, the sound was really, really pleasant to my ears. And that, with, that is with the adjustments on the tweeter at 12 o'clock in the mid position, not minimum or maximum, but right there in the middle. Um, and I'm not sure where that adjustments knob kicks in, if it is from like 12K and up or from 8K and up, or if it's, if, or if it is even including the mid range. They might be including the mid-range or it might just be the tweeter 
but I don't know how far down in frequency that that in adjustment knob goes. I I have a feeling that it probably goes down into the six seven thousand um, range uh, and probably work from there because these have a on the paper uh, that I checked up they have a frequency response uh, from it says that the frequency response is 30 to 18 K and I want to say that that's probably very correct uh, and it sounded like it and I want to just throw something in here uh, over the last three four years uh, I have done a lot of because of my health and the issues that I had and they thought that I had vertigo at one point I have done a lot of testing on my ears yes hearing tests and all kinds of stuff and my hearing even though I'm close to 50 years old is smack on perfect and I have attended concerts loud listening rooms hi-fi hi pro audio home theater and I played loud music in my car so I should have really had damaged hearing but I don't. I'm, my hearing is good. It's perfect for, according to the doctors, um, and I, I don't have any sin the tiny tinnitus or whatever you call it, or sinusitis. Oh, that that beeping noise. So my hearing is is according to the doctors good. So I want to say that these are easily going all the way up to 18k as they are put on on the paper. Um, what else can I say? <clears throat> Beside the sound is really good. I, <clears throat> I I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to take some smack for this one. And I'm okay with that because I, I am known to say, speak my mind and have my own opinions. And I don't care what people think about it. I want to say that these XP1 speakers are better in sound quality and in performance uh, how they play when you push them and uh, the sound quality and the performance of the XP one is better than the speakers that I have on the bottom here and just in case you don't know what that is or you can't um, uh, um, recognize the, the front cloth that's the, the OLA original large advents those advents are hyped up by a lot of people I like them don't get me wrong I like the OLA I even have some smaller Advents over here. I like a lot of the Advent speakers. I'm a big Advent fan. But these, D Fisher XP1, and I'm not, this is not the Sanyo or Sanyo um, speaker crap. This is the originals from the 60s. These sound better than the Advent OLA. Do they do these sounds better than these Altex? In certain areas, yes. The mid range in these and the tweeter in these are to me better than these. You probably have a little bit more bass in these, but this one I feel is very depending on the type of amplifier that you hook up. The the Altec bass is not very picky either. Um, Either or amplifier you put on it, it plays good. I want to say the Fisher is a little bit amplifier picky and because I, I could hear a big difference in sound and a big difference in performance when I switch between the two amplifiers. And God knows what will happen when I start to put them on the other ones over here. Uh, I'm not going to put any big amps on it because they're not rated for a lot of power. Um, I, I was reading about it, but I couldn't, I can't remember what it was, but I want to say this, these are probably um, somewhere between 60 and 100, 60 and 100 watts rated probably. So I'm going to test them with, I have a couple of receivers over here, a Marantz, uh, I have a Marantz integrated amplifier over here, I have a Scott uh, receiver over here, and I have some Techniques Class A power amplifiers over here. So more text testing will be done. And at that, that, at that point, I will know for sure how each amplifier fits this speaker. Because this speaker is kind of like, it's a little bit selective on how it plays with different amps. I, that's maybe, 
the advents are probably more universal, if you know what I mean. And you can probably hook up two or three or four different amps and they will all sound about the same. Um, these are a little bit more picky, they are a little bit more selective. Uh, I, I feel that these uh, needs a good amp. Um, I want to say that the Advents are probably more, um, have probably higher sensitivity, a little bit more efficient. I don't think these are very efficient. I think these have a low sensitivity. I, I don't know, I couldn't find much information about them, so I don't know what it, what it is. But I probably want to say in the mid 80s somewhere. Um, so overall, uh, the, the D Fisher XP1 uh, is a great speaker. The only drawback with them is if something happens. <laughs> God forbid. If, but the thing is, you don't have to worry too much about refoaming these. And you know why? Because they have an accordion surround, uh, clothing, uh, as cloth, cloth, accordion surround, which is treated with a very, very sticky material. So you don't have to worry about re-foaming or re-suspensioning these speakers because I don't think they will ever, ever deteriorate. The only thing that can happen is if you play them so hard that they, they play out of ex their excursion limit and you, you damage it that way. But if something happens to the woofer or if you blow it, of course, or if something happens to the mid or the tweeter, it's a three-way speaker. If something happens to the drivers, it is a nightmare to get this grill off. So I, I have seen that a lot of people have gotten them off and they, they put them in storage and they, they use the speakers without the plastic grill. Now, do the plastic grill has a influence on the sound? Well. It's hard to say because I haven't tested with or without. I just tested it with. So, but you know, it's plastic. So maybe there are some resonances uh, that are being, that you can hear that is not from the speaker itself or the drivers, but it's from the plastic. So I never liked plastic grills in the front of uh, speakers. Uh, I don't even like it as a frame with a cutout to put cloth around. I prefer it to be wood just because it has a little bit less resonances to give off, um, less uh, prone to vibrations and stuff like that. But if you can get them off, I, I, I mean for the looks, they look cool with it, but for the sound, I'll probably just take them off and leave them off. And if you sell them, you just put them back on. Because <laughs> they're easy, they're very easy to get back on but they are a freaking nightmare to get off. Uh, so that's the only drawback with them. Um, and of course, the, another drawback is a lot, of, a lot of people today are really overlooking these speakers and these are very underrated. And they have a, a, wrong, a wrong reputation because a lot of people think when they hear the name, the Fisher they automatically think about the 80s stuff that was built by Sanyo when Sanyo owned the Fisher company. Um, so the name Fisher um, has in many ears and in many, many people's mind a bad, bad association and they have a bad reputation. But don't mistake D Fisher, T-H-E, D Fisher with Fisher. Um, there's a big difference, huge difference. That's of course, it's a drawback when you are supposed to maybe put them up for sale. Um, because a lot of people don't know what you are selling. They think you're selling some 80s crap. But let me tell you, the ones who knows about these, they go for them all day long because it is a bargain. You can get them for a good, good price. Um, unless, unless the seller knows what he has, because then he will price it accordingly. A lot of people will pay good money for this. Most people will shy away because they are overlooked and underrated. Um, I want to say that these in, in mint condition or close to mint condition, 
uh, should be and will be valued somewhere in the seven, six, seven, eight hundred dollar range, just because of the heritage and the history of the company and the product and the way they sound. They sound amazing. These are not that mint condition or even close. Um, so I have just, if I was going to sell them today, I would ask 500 and hopefully someone took the bait and, hook and the hook and the line and the sinker. Uh, if not, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be unhappy if I got 350 for them. I think in this condition, 350 is fair. But um, if I re near them, oh, the, the price goes up. This is um, diamond in the rough. It's a hidden gem. It's the emerald that everyone is looking for, uh, but most people don't know about it. If you come across someone who sells an XP1 pair of speakers, and you could buy them for 50, 100, 125, 150, jump on the boat and get them and haul them home. They are worth it. Um, and you will not be um, disappointed. As long as you use an amplifier, I wouldn't, I, I don't know yet, but I would try and stay away from small receivers. If you're gonna use a receiver, at least go with a receiver that is like 60, 70, 80, 90 watts per channel. But use at least more than 50 watts on each speaker because these are power hungry. I mean, they, 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 they take power, trust me. Um, because when I did eight, uh, 12 o'clock on the volume on the carver, which is like 80 watts per channel in 8 ohm, did I feel that they would take more? Heck yeah, they would take more. So I didn't, it didn't feel or it didn't sound to me like I was stressing the speaker in any way, shape or form. So there you go. Uh, should you buy, and will I give two thumbs up for the D Fisher XP1? Let me answer the first one first. Yes, you should buy them. If you're into good vintage audio and good sound, you should buy them. Will I give them two thumbs up? Heck yeah. They are recommended. So until next time, take care.